Hey guys, welcome back to the series Did It Survive, where I'm taking the 36 enemies from the original Legend of Zelda and seeing if they made it out of the original game, and if they did, how they evolved over the years. In the previous video, we checked up on Lynels, Armos, Goria, Rope, and the Zora enemy. As you know, most of these guys have stuck around, changing with the style of whichever game they're appearing in. Per request, I'll be including the graphics for any enemy that is also in Cadence of Hyrule. Although it's not a main game, it has a very extensive enemy roster, holding most of the more well-known enemies. Within this installment, we'll be having a pretty good mix of old school, well-known, and maybe even some forgotten enemies. Let's start with a pretty common and well-known enemy, the Keys, more commonly known as Bats. Keys are arguably one of the most identifiable enemies in the whole franchise, making an appearance out of 19 out of 20 games with a ton of spin-off and crossover appearances. In the original, there was one type of Keys but was seen in three different colors. Blue and black Keys were found in dungeons in small to medium groups, where a couple of red Keys would show up from defeating a Vire. We'll talk about these guys a little bit later. Keys have changed slightly over the years. They have evolved more into an elemental change rather than how they actually look. Their new elemental powers started with fire and ice, so either lighting you on fire or freezing you into a popsicle, later evolving into electricity in three of the games, stunning you with a hit or completely disarming you. Keys are still found in most dungeons and here recently in groups coming from caves or just roaming around the map of Hyrule and Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, still only taking half to a quarter of a heart with any of its hits and only having one to two hearts for their health in game, they're extremely easy to defeat, just annoying with the elemental aspects. Keys are found in Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Four Swords, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures, The Menish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, Cadence of Hyrule, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. Literally every game but Adventure of Link. Along with some unexpected crossovers in Nintendo Land, Sonic Lost World, and Mario Kart 8. These guys are icons in my opinion. I can't begin to tell you how many times these guys have either gotten me killed by a much larger enemy or just knocked me off a jump into the void below. They're quite annoying but have stood the test of time and undoubtedly thrived throughout the series with rather little change to their appearance. This next guy's name's Dig Dogger, basically a huge eyeball with spikes covering its whole body with some insect legs to get around. In the original, it was the boss in level 7 and 5. While in battle, you play the recorder and it disarms the enemy making it lose all of its spikes for self-defense, allowing for a one hit, of course that is if you made it past the death orbs in level 5. And after playing the recorder and level 7, it splits into three little guys, each having 8 health. Funny enough, if you had a console that had a microphone, you could literally just yell at it to shrink it down instead of using the recorder. Dick Dogger only made it in two of the games, The Legend of Zelda and Oracle of Seasons. It did, however, kind of make it into Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom as a reference. It's one of the bridges to make it to Gerudo Town next to the Great Plateau. I would like to see a revision of these guys. It would be a pretty difficult fight if the eye was still on top of the enemy, but who doesn't like a good challenge? This next enemy somewhat even count as an actual enemy, but I assure you they're quite painful with their hits, and I'm talking about the stone statues. They're commonly found in the original dungeon, colored respectively to match the color of the level that they're found in. Some are just a core scattered around, and some shoot flaming balls of death at you while you're trying to kill enemies in that room. Their hit power remains close to the same, with half to a whole heart in damage, so overall really changing over the years from a fish or a bird to other animals to their current form which seem like small Hylian statues almost shrine-like on the map. Speaking of, they also make a short career in Quest and Breath of the Wild, also making us question why they're randomly placed all over the map of Hyrule in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, other than for Koroks. Getting back on track here, they appear out of 11 out of the 20 total games in the series. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Spirit Tracks, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. I honestly despise these guys. They've killed me more times than I can count in the most inconvenient locations. But I actually like their designs, especially in the original and A Link to the Past. It adds an interesting complication to the rooms throughout the dungeons. I would like to think these guys have stuck around for the most part, even if they aren't a threat to Link anymore. I would like to proudly introduce this next enemy, P-Hat. No, no, not like that. This guy. P-Hats are plant-like creatures that use petals to lift themselves up off the ground and float around the overworld map completely untouchable until they come back to the ground to take a quick break before taking off again. While on the ground is the only time you can actually take a shot at them. Only having two health in the original and dealing half a heart of damage if you are hit, these guys definitely try your patience and are a total distraction flying all over the screen while you're attacking other enemies. Overall, P-Hats have made it into 11 games as well as a couple crossovers. The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, The Wind Waker, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, A Link Between Worlds, and Cadence of Hyrule. Some of these guys are quite vicious and others completely harmless, acting as a grappling hook spot. I have what I would consider a pretty common experience with P-Hats from Ocarina of Time. 
The first time I seen this guy, I freaked out and ran as far and as fast as I could. I will also add, I think the nicer version of these guys are extremely cool. They made for a few really cool puzzles and are pretty fun to travel by in both Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. These are definitely one of a kind enemies in the series. I would like to see them come back as friendly hook grabbers, however. Not so much the bloodthirsty monsters. Unless you played the original Zelda, this next guy isn't going to be known. These guys are called Patra. They're found in level 9 at both quests and are unnecessarily difficult with 9 flying eyeballs, the smaller ones having 6 health, and the big one in the center having 11 health. And you can only take a hit at the center after defeating all the smaller ones. After all Patra's health has been depleted with 59 health, you might shed a tear or two before carrying on throughout the rest of the dungeon, only to run into a few more. Rightfully so, considering it's the very last dungeon in the whole game, only being open for exploration after the 8 pieces of Triforce have been obtained, ultimately rescuing Princess Zelda at the end. Patra only appears in the original Zelda. I think after the stress these guys caused me as a kid, they can absolutely stay in the past. This last enemy should be pretty well known to old school players as well as the newer players. These guys are called Wizrobes. Only found in dungeons level 6 and 9 along with level 5 in the second quest, there are two variations of Wizrobes in the original Zelda. Red Wiz robes appear in front of Link making for an easy attack where the blue guys are menaces. They warp all over the room quickly hitting you if you're in their line of sight. The best way to defeat these guys are to get behind them and attack since they can't hit you from that direction. The Red Wiz robe has 3 health hearts with a contact hit taking 1 heart and a magic blast taking 4. The blue Wiz robes might have more health with 5 hearts but a contact hit will only be 1 heart and a magic blast being 2. Thankfully with how unpredictable the blue guys are, the hits they land aren't as bad as the reds but they're equally harsh in their own way. Wiz robes appear in The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Four Swords, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Triforce Heroes, Cadence of Hyrule, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. They have quite a few color variations throughout the games, but in Four Swords they adapted fire and ice elements into the games. Later in Breath of the Wild, they further evolve into electric wiz robes. Also, in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, they have upgraded versions of fire, ice, and electricity, called Media Wiz Robes, Blizz Robes, and Thunder Wiz Robes for a tougher battle. Also, not to forget the Wiz Robes from Majora's Mask. These mini bosses are in four of the dungeons in the quest to save Termina. They're actually misspelled in their game description, making it common to miss as a wizrobe along with their appearance. I believe these guys have stuck around for the most part throughout the series. Being in 13 of the original games and a crossover, they've definitely made a comeback in the two newer games, making them pretty relevant again. I hope you guys liked the second video of the series. I'll leave a link to the introduction video right here and at the very end, so if you're interested in the series, you can catch up on who's been elaborated on. With the addition of these guys, it's now 11 out of the 36 original enemies. Please tell me in the comments a personal experience you had with any of these guys, or if you would like to see any of them make an appearance in an upcoming Zelda game in the future. Until next time guys, be safe and make sure to manually save. Bye guys!